How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Good. Got some beautiful weather. A little uh, feels like it's snowing with the dogwood, and here we go. What, what are you seeing out of the two quarterbacks right now? I mean, from Gino and Drew in particular. Yeah, I think those two guys are doing a great job. Obviously, Jake doing a good job as well, coming along with those guys. But you know, trying to demonstrate that leadership ability, whether it's in the meetings, whether it's out on the field, and doing a great job of, of really embracing the competition amongst themselves, right? Where they're pushing each other to do a better job every single day. How do you? I know it's a long way away from now, but how do you ultimately? What what, do you, what factors do you are you going to look at to decide on the starting quarterback? I think really just the overall command of the position, you know, who, who gives us the best chance to, to win games when it comes to the fall. And, and right now it's just a good learning op where we're, you know, this time of year we're in t-shirt and shorts for them to really build that foundation where they can go into training camp and, and put themselves in the best positions to compete. What does command of the position mean? I think understanding all of our concepts, understanding how the, uh, the operation works, you know, where all the, uh, uh, you know, where all the concepts are intended to attack, uh, understanding of the run game, understanding the cadence, you know, all the things that go in uh, to, to putting yourself in position as a quarterback to, to make a play. How much catching up does Drew still have to do or do you feel like he's caught up based on, you know, compared to Gino having been here before? I think uh, Drew's done a great job of really picking up the offense quickly. Uh, he's got a great overall, overall understanding of, of the game. And so he's done a nice job of, you know, really starting from a, a little bit of a, a back seat right there, just from a pure knowledge standpoint, being in uh, the first time in the system to really jumping in here and maximizing the, uh, the time we've had out on the field. Uh, I'm sorry. Do you envision eventually alternating with the, those guys with the ones, or how are you going to approach that? Yeah, I think those are just going to be constant conversations. And, you know, as we move forward here, finishing up the offseason and getting into training camp, then it's something we'll sit down and discuss and exactly how we want to uh, to balance out reps or, or to give reps to different guys with different people around. And, and the good thing about this time of year is we've really tried to do a good job of we've had the ones and twos, so to speak, going, but we've had a lot of mixing and matching of different guys getting their chances, not just at the quarterback position, but all throughout our offense. So everyone can have that chance to be with the first group and get a chance to go with the second group and, and mix and match with different people and different teammates throughout the uh, the course of the of practice. Last year, you were new, new offense. You didn't have full OTAs. How much more edge can this offense be going into camp with all the status work that you I think, you know, first of all, it's a lot of fun just being out here and, and having all these guys out here and, and getting a chance to work with them every day. So you get a positive uh, start to everyone uh, from a relationship standpoint. We're actually in person with guys and getting a chance to, to talk with them day in and day out and not just the X's and O's, but like I said, just developing that the human element of the game where you get to know the guys, get to know a little bit more about them as, as people. And, and I think that goes a long way when you get into training camp and have a chance to really talk with these guys. And then from a from a learning standpoint, you know, these guys have a chance to guys that have been here for a year, you know, they don't have to relearn formations or know anything that's uh, new as far as the verbiage goes. And then it also helps out some of the new guys that are coming in where, you know, their teammates, everyone can help each other along, uh, you know, different than the first year where everyone's learning on the fly. Will, will the offense be much different at all not having Russell and having two guys that maybe have a little bit of different style? Yeah, I think like uh, like any offense, I think the, the primary thing is we'll have our, our philosophy and we'll stick to our, our core beliefs as an offense, but it will always adapt to, to what the players are and what the players can do as each season goes. So looking forward to seeing how that, that evolves, and, and that's really player-based as we get into camp and start getting into the games. Assuming you're fully healthy this time around, what more can you get out of D? At a D, I think he's done a great job of, of really coming out here and, and stacking those those blocks. And I think we saw it in spurts last year where you know he had that unfortunate situation where early injury and then a kind of middle of season or early uh, training camp injury, then early season injury injury. But when he's been able to get out there and, and stack those days together, and he looks impressive. He looks like he always did in, in our evaluation of him coming out, where he's got that fast twitch uh, ability in the routes. He's got a good toughness in the run game, and so you know he's a really a guy that's going into year two. With with, with uh, uh, a lot of uh, room to grow just based on some unfortunate circumstances. What have you learned about Drew since you've been able to work with him a little bit? I think uh, Drew, you know, really the personality part of Drew, you know, you get a chance to see him on tape and, and have those uh, evaluations there, but just a good good person that's that's doing a great job of connecting with his teammates, uh, really a good teammate in general as far as working hard, wanting to do the right thing. Uh, I think doing a great job of just an, adjusting to a whole new building, a whole new uh, set of people that he's working with. So getting to know him as a person and, and knowing he's the type of guy that, that guys will want to follow as long as he keeps putting in this hard work and, and doing the right thing like he's been doing each day and every day here.
initial thoughts on Ken Walker? Just in terms of him understanding concepts, what have you seen? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, for the for the running backs at this time of year, you know, it's always an interesting time to say we truly can evaluate him in the in the T-shirt and shorts uh, segment of the programming here. But but Ken's done a nice job of picking up the offense, you know, especially, you know, you always look at that. How's that transition going pass protection, the understanding of, of the different pass protection scenarios that present themselves uh, in the NFL. And, and he's done a really good job. And Chad Morton's done an excellent job coaching him up there. So, you know, he's a rookie that's been able to go in there, whether it's with the first group, second group, or any of the, the situations, and you don't feel like you have to do anything different because he's already been able to pick up the system and has that good understanding uh, with still a long way to go and you know those reps and time on task but just being able to function at, at a high level right away has been impressive how much do you envision this group of running backs being used to take some pressure off the quarterbacks just given that the quarterbacks are, are new and uh, maybe not used to Kind of mm -hmm. I think, you know, just in general terms from a uh, philosophical standpoint with our offense is, is being able to be a balanced offense, uh, which starts with being able to run the ball efficiently is a big part of it. And I think regardless of, of which quarterbacks under center, I think that's a helpful part to, uh, to any offense and certainly something that we're going to keep looking to, to grow from and, and, and really continue where we felt like we were leaving off la the end of last season, uh, where the running backs, the offensive line, the tight ends, uh, receivers, everyone in unison, all 11 uh, handling. Uh, handling the run game at a high level. What, what did you learn from that? Those last like six, six games or whatever, where the run game really got going well, that you could take into this year. Yeah, I think uh, just the way that the guys really came together and and really had a good understanding uh, of the system and of what they were looking to hit as far as the tempo of some of the runs and and obviously with Rashad Penny coming along and you know another guy that had some unfortunate circumstances injury wise uh, throughout his career but you know anytime you get more and more running backs to that position the competition is going to uh, raise up a level and so different things that you know that were out of everyone's control uh, kind of happened with the run game with injuries and stuff like that but did a great job of those guys all pushing themselves and, and now you add Ken Walker into the mix and you got a, a great room of running backs I think that'll just up the competition and, and bring out the best in our run game. How much have you been able to learn about Charles Cross and, and Abe Lucas so far? I mean with offensive line especially the fact you're not in pads yet like to, to mm -hmm. learn their games and how, how they're going to fit. Yeah, I think yeah. One thing you get with the with the offensive linemen is right away see how they fit in with the rest of the group. To so think of uh, of all the positions, you know, communication is important. But you know, with the offensive line, I, I think it's it's paramount right there, and their ability to to interact with the guards next to them or interact in that offensive line room and and really have an understanding of of what the system entails, whether it's a run game or protections, uh, and have a good feel for it. And both those guys have shown that that they could come right in and, and they've studied hard. There's, you know, you get the extra time for, with the rookies as far as meetings go and, and they've been in there, uh, you know, all day, every day, so to speak, uh, when they can. And, and Andy Dickerson's done a great job with getting those guys, again, similar to Ken, where felt like they've been caught up to speed pretty quick and there's a, a, a long way to go, a lot of understanding uh, left to gain in the offense, but they've been able to get in right, right away and, and be able to operate at a high level at this time of year. Going back to that stretch. You, about those, just because about those tackles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much pause do you double think about two rookies starting on each side of the offensive line? Yeah, I think uh, in my mind, by the time we get to that first game and, and the best guys are playing, you know, they'll earn those positions. And if it's the two rookies, that means that they've beat out some guys that are that are good uh, players in their own right. So, you know, we have a lot of competition at those tackle positions. Uh, the draft obviously has, has uh, taken that competition to a to a different level as far as younger guys that are competing against each other. Uh, so I think it's going to be a great thing in the long run. And, and if those guys go out and, and earn that job, then you feel comfortable because they've, they've earned it over got other guys that have had a chance to play and, and play well in the NFL. Going back to the stretch that Penny had last year, after you... it was obviously a different runner, but were there were you guys going with different styles of runs? And was that part of the success that you had? No, I don't think necessarily different styles of runs. I just think this the, the culmination of uh, of guys sticking with it and, and really staying balanced throughout the course of the year. You know, like like we know from last year, there were some ups and downs that happened, especially, uh, you know, through that first to, to middle part of the year. And I think it was just more a culmination of everyone trusting in, in the, uh, you know, the, the process that we have in the, in the building and coming into work every day. And then the results eventually showed up on the field. The term tight end friendly to describe this offense. What, what makes it so? 
I think, uh, well, you know, Noah makes it tight end friendly as well. You know, the good tight ends make any offense uh, tight end friendly. So I think just having the ability, we got, you know, the group of guys right now that can do a little bit of everything. So the more tight ends can do, you know, the more chances we can move them around and not necessarily just have to line them up, line them up in a, a static inline position and give them a chance to move around and, and present different looks for a defense. And so we've got guys between uh, Will Disley and, and Colby Parkinson, Noah's joined the mix now, and, and Tyler Mabry, that, that can all do a little bit of everything. So it's so, so in that regard, it makes it friendly for the tight end, I think, in terms of you know getting out in the pass game, helping out in the run game, doing a little bit of everything, not necessarily just one thing. You guys just really in so many positions on this offense, and maybe excitement isn't the right word to use, but is there an excitement when you have new guys at all these different places, you can see what they can do, and in your own right, kind of draw things out for them? Yeah, there, there's a, obviously there's some comp, a lot of competition in a lot of different uh, positions right now. And, uh, you know, we're a little younger than we were at this time last year. And so I think just naturally uh, with those competitions at those spots, you know, it brings the energy level up in certain uh, certain times of the year where, you know, there's, these aren't guys that have accumulated a thousand reps in the NFL. They're guys that are learning a lot from, from right now. And, and so I think it just brings out the heightened sense of uh, urgency of the offseason program here. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. The two rookie receivers have been out the last couple of practices, but what have you seen from them in the limited time that they've been here? Where do you see them fitting into the receiver competition? I think, uh, you know, similar to, and we did, I feel like, a, a great job with the draft as far as, uh, you know, getting guys that we feel mentally are ready to go right away, and, and that's uh, where I put Derek and Bo as well. You know, they've done a good job of, of being able to, to pick up the system, you know, understand where to line up, understand some of the early nuances of, of their route running, and I think the biggest thing for them is just, you know, getting up, getting out on the field and getting a chance to, you know, not just be able to do it in the meeting, but getting out on the field and, and consistently get those quality reps throughout the, the off season and especially getting into training camp right there because they're both fast. They can both, you know, really run. So be excited to get them out there and, and when they get that full understanding and, and full grasp of everything that's going on, you know, really playing at their, their, their full speed. With guys like Mitch Peck a little bit, Cody, Aaron, maybe even Penny to some extent, what do those guys got to do with the receiver group? crack the lineup and get more touches. Yeah, I think they've done a great job. Penny Hart had a great uh, job. They had a couple back-to-back -back nice plays down the field. And I think with him and, and and Cody and Aaron, like these are guys that have really put in the work and really you see them grow from last year to this year, keep getting better and better. And again, it just goes back to just the theme of, of all the positions on offense where there's just a lot of great competition among amongst a lot of younger receivers. Uh, and then you got guys that have, have had more playing experience like Freddie Swain, who's continued to just do the do consistently right, you know, every day he's out here. So all those things come together, you put the rookies in there and it just adds to the mix of the of the theme of competition and pushes those guys to work even harder. What about Marquis schedule? These guys obviously played a lot of football mm -hmm. new to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you know, just walking in the door as a as a professional. I know uh, Sanjay had some uh, some experience with with Marquis, so was really really uh, high on him when he came in here in the building about his person, about how he would fit in, and he's done an excellent job of that. And I think just like some of the other guys that are new to the to the building this year, you know, how do you get into a new sitting uh, new setting? Excuse me, uh, with new guys and and really be able to blend right in to the culture and and to the people that are around you. He's done a great job with that, and then you get out on the field and, and you notice right away that this guy is fast. So it's a, it's a good starting point for a receiver. How appealing is it to be able to bring in a guy like that that's played with Kyle Shanahan's offense? It has some similar principles to what Sean McVay's offense has and yeah. what you've learned coming here. Yeah, I think just his accumulated reps in, in the NFL throughout the years, you know, there's not a whole lot of new things. Maybe the term might be a little bit different for, for what we're using, but conceptually, you know, he's a guy that can walk right in and, and he doesn't have to take a couple weeks to figure out what's going on. You know, we could st we started putting him in right away, right when he walked in the door. And, you know, there's still a little bit of room to grow in terms of his overall knowledge of everything that's going on from, from just arriving. But, you know, he's done a really good job of picking it up. And then just his natural football sense, you know, he can pick it up quickly and, and be ready to go. As a communicator, teacher, year two, putting in this offense? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, primarily, uh, you know, listening, you know, doing a good job of being a, a great listener throughout this offseason program. And and uh, I think as uh, as I've, get, you know, been able to be in the role for a year, uh, just, just understanding, you know, all the good input that, that's around me and, and just doing a good job of, of, of listening and not doing all the talking, unlike this uh, moment right here. Something Pete and John said about you.
a lot because he can make all the throws. Mm -hmm. An assessment usually here with a lot of young QBs. When you hear that phrase, a guy can make all the throws, what specifically does that mean to you? Yeah, I think, well, I think it applies really to all three of the, the quarterbacks we have out here battling. Uh, you know, their arm talent, uh, you know, they can make every throw in the book. They can throw the go balls down the field if they need to. They can throw, you know, play action routes as, as far as you need to throw it. Uh, and then they can also, you know, have the ability to make some of the underneath touch throws or the level two throws in that, that mid-range zone. So, you know, we've got three guys that have that arm talent uh, that, that really keeps the entire playbook wide open. With Espers last year, what did you see when he got back for those final few games? I, I saw a guy that was, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, probably a little bit down just from his bad luck because he wants to be out here so bad. You know, he wants to be out here competing and, and participating. And then uh, when he was able to come back, you know, it wasn't a, a thing where you saw him like, uh, you know, what, why why this happened to me? He just came back to work. And I thought he did a good job of, of progressing. And it showed up in the offseason program here where he was able to step in. And it's not like he's stepping in as a, as a rookie and starting all over again. You know, he was able to, to battle that adversity, overcome it, you know, with hard work and, and be able to step into an offseason ready to go. Shane, you obviously got to work with Gino last year. Mm -hmm. What maybe, if anything, has seemed different about him knowing about this offseason, knowing that there's a chance to be a super this time around instead of the goal that he was in for most of the last year? Yeah, I think just that just the natural way that the room works when when you're the backup you know one of the, the uh, good qualities in a good backup is being able to be fully supportive of the starter and I thought Gino did such an excellent job of really uh, adapting to that role uh, but now that that it's the competition that we've got going you know he's able to step more in that leadership role so you just hear from him more you hear from him a little bit more in the meetings uh, hear from him more out on the field uh, in that leadership role and that's that's something that that I think on, on offense you know a lot of guys have done a good job of trying to step into those leadership leadership roles that, that maybe have, uh, you know, are missing right now because of some of the, the veteran guys that aren't here. And so, you know, whether it's whether it's uh, Gino or Drew at the quarterback position stepping in there, I think Damian Lewis has done an excellent job of being that leader by example and having a great offseason program so far. Uh, and then, you know, with Tyler Lockett, Will Disley, some of those veterans. But I think the voice of leadership, you know, for Gino is something that you see more and more now, you know, with just the, the way the roles are, are with our offense. Does his experience in, in the system and three years with the team kind of show up on him too right now too? Yeah, it definitely does because he's got he's got full command of the offense, uh, knows everything that's going on, and uh, you know understands all the concepts, all the run game concepts as well. So you know he's done a great job. He did a great job when he was in that number two role of not just being in the role, but preparing every day like he was going to be the starter that week.